So uh, I took this weekend and finally retooled the uh, indoor vertical farm. Got the lights out, got it outside. It's just more comfortable working out here in the ceiling fans and all than in the garage. Um, I had to solve a problem to get this to do what I wanted to do. The, the, the top tray is running exactly the same way it always was. I really can't see if you can see in there, but uh, one delivery pipe, one return line, return line right there, setting the height just so the bottom is just covered. I can see, I can definitely see the bottom there. I can see high enough to look in. I had a step stool out here for you, but my granddaughter took it to, uh, to make stuff in the kitchen. Anyway, um, so that is pretty much the same as it's been. If you've seen it, if you haven't, you can go back and look. I did end up with a small crack in uh, this tray. These trays are pretty expensive and it's still just barely leaking. And I've had it running for a couple hours now and I can live with the leak. I may get some epoxy and paint the inside. This is a uh, JB water weld and it's just not quite enough and it's cracked right at the freaking bulkhead. So eventually this tray will probably fail, but they're expensive enough that I I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, since it's going to live in the garage. So there we got that. Now, this is what the big change was. And what I wanted to do was go from a flow through system to an ebb and flow system. And I was initially going to try to do it with net cups where the net cups just sat in here and just let it ebb and flow naturally without using Lika because Lika is expensive. The thing about Lika, and this is Lika if you've never seen it before, it's, it's expensive, but it's worth it. It's like first class on an airplane. Uh, this stuff is so light, it literally floats, and you have to have enough of it in here. You can see right now I've got it cycling. The problem was these trays are actually pretty pretty big, and I know they're shallow, you know, when you look at it like four inches, but even if you're filling it like that much, there's a lot of water in, in this tray. And if it's rising and falling, you need a significant reservoir. Well, what I wanted to do, and Dad, this is two bags of Lika, two 25 liter bags, and I'm probably gonna add one more, because if you look at this, see how it's damp, even on the surface? That is a recipe for algae. So I wanna go deep enough with the Lika that the top stays mostly dry. Um, that'll keep us from having an algae problem, which is another nice thing. Now I don't have to use chloroplast or any kind of cover to be setting net cups into and worrying about that, uh, because if you, if you just leave it wide open, you will get algae. I will get algae up here. This is so convenient to be able to just take a six pack with, with rapid rooter plugs in it, with seeds in it, throw it in there, or take a 1020 or a 1010 tray and throw it up there with microgreens. It is so convenient, it's worth going up there. You know, once a week it's spraying it with hydrogen peroxide, and maybe once every three weeks pulling it out. It doesn't take much to pull it out, and uh, hitting it with a little bit heavier peroxide and setting it in the sun for a half an hour. It, it's totally worth it for that convenience. That would be too much doing all this. This has to be continuous running, cycling, uh, what have you. So by adding the Lika, uh, everywhere there's a Lika, there's not fluid. So it displaced a ton of fluid. The next thing I did is, so this side's delivering, right? And this side is overflowing. I ended up realizing I only needed about three quarters of an inch higher standpipe than delivery pipe. So this brings fluid in, brings the level up, overflows over here. This sets the overflow level. This sets the return level. So once the pump kicks off, the water starts to fall back down through the pump into the reservoir down here and out that valve that's bending excess pressure right now. That's how that all works. In doing that, I had a couple things. One, I had been running it with a 17 gallon uh, commander as my tank. When I was doing flow through, and we were only pushing water through these trays, right? All we were doing is moving water through these trays. So we were going up there, overflowing down to here, overflowing down to here. We weren't delivering to each tray individually, and all we were getting is a little tiny bit of rise as it flowed through because the exit and the entrance were about the same height. So we didn't need much reserve. I tried, and I do not suggest you use one. I tried using a 40-gallon commander. I, you can see that I even put a ratchet strap around it. It worked, it just bowed way too much. I was like, sooner or later, that's gonna get weak and, and 40 gallons are gonna go on the, on the ground. So I went by Lowe's and I found these 27 gallon tanks and I played with the height of the stand-up pipe versus the delivery pipe until I could get everything I wanted with the least amount of taking away during a cycle. Because the problem is, as that level flow, if that level drops in that tank, okay, 
eventually you get to a point where that pump can't get enough fluid to pump it up there and you have to add more fluid. I don't mind adding fluid every week. It doesn't bother me at all. Adding fluid like every day or every other day, I'm going to forget. My plants are going to dry out and they're going to die. I was able to pretty much make it work with a, with a single 27. Because again, there's only three quarters of an inch in disparity between the pipes. And if you look, I'm about to cut it off here so you can see how much it drains. There's plenty of fluid. All I have to do is bring the fluid to the roots. That's all I got to do. And even when I put another inch of leak on here, um, you know, a rapid rooter plug is about an inch and a half long. So if we set an inch and a half in there, you can see that like the whole thing's soaking wet right now. It's a little bit unlevel. Well, like I said, this stuff is so light and so easy to work with. You can see that it actually floats. And it's kind of cool. The best way to put it, I found to put it in the tray, have a tray full of water. When you put it in, it naturally levels itself because it follows the level of the water and the water always finds level. So again, this one is just not, there's not enough here. It wouldn't hold. This one, again, I want another, probably half a bag to a bag. I want the top dry. So this will get two bags. That displacement made it where it actually takes very little water from the reserve tank. But what I wanted was longevity. So my thought was, well, if one's good, two is better. Two is one, one is none. The problem, you can see they bow a little bit. They bow nothing like the 40 gallon. They have a lot more structural integrity because of their height relative to their length to their width, right? So they're just much better. And if there was a lid on there, they'd bow even a little bit less. So no problems there. But how do you get water? Because if you look right there, there's your return line. There's your delivery side. Well, if we just ran that, eventually this would overflow and that would empty. And it would take, what, one cycle for that to happen. All right. The easy answer would be, well, put a bulkhead in there and put a piece of one-inch pipe between the two of them. And effectively, they become a single tank. And the problem with that is... This is a smaller one, but it's made of the exact same material. See this? This is just, this is not made to be a water tank. Everybody does it. They work really good for it. It's useful, but they're just not made to be a water tank. So if you have 27 gallons of fluid and you're going to want your, you know, your, your bulkhead somewhere low. So as the level falls, it continues to work, at least as low as the pump's ability to suck could be where you want. It. You're down here. So you got the most amount of pressure. You've got this side bowing. This stuff, this, this kind of plastic stuff they make these things out of, it does get brittle over time, and sooner or later, right? So how do we do, deal with this? We use something called an aquarium siphon. And this is just a magic little thing, very well known in the pet trade. And basically this replaces a bulkhead to get water from this tank to this tank. These are simply 90s, these are one inch 90s, a one inch connector pipe, and then two one inch down pipes. And these two pipes right here need to be the exact same length. You need to measure them and make sure the same. The length here doesn't really matter, right? As long as it's long enough to go across and sit level on here. And then what you do, and I'll do another video sometime when somebody's here to hold it for me. You take this and you hold it upside down and you fill this with water. You hold it level when you do it so that both sides, so it's completely full of water. And then very quickly, you just kind of flip it into your two tanks. Now your tanks have to have water high enough in them for this to work. You now have a siphon. As this side goes lower, it pulls water from this side. As this side goes lower, it pulls. It will constantly equalize. It's effectively the. It, it's not exactly, but it's effectively the same as a bulkhead. Now that would require two bulkheads. That's an expense. There are also two failure points. All right, and you know potential points for leak, leaking. All of those, all of that good stuff, all that bad stuff. Right. By doing this, you eliminate the bulkheads. They're cheap because it's just pipe and a couple fittings. So I put two in. Two is one, one and none. So kids come around, knock one of these over. It's enough to maintain. I might even put a third one in here. So if you look right now, you can see that the level there, you can see the little uh, dimple. It's about a half inch below that dimple. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's just barely above. There it is right there behind that pipe. It's just barely above the dimple. There's about a one inch disparity. And that's simply because it, this is, if you look at the amount of flow coming out of there, it's, it's pretty heavy. It takes some time for this water to move up over here. The good news, the lower one side gets than the other side, the harder the siphon pulls, right? So if it's just a little bit off, it pulls gently. And as this side drops, this pulls harder and it maintains the stasis. How well? Been running all night. I wanted to make sure we wouldn't have some kind of overrun or something like that. So I don't have the timer on it. This is just water. This is not uh, affluent because I don't right now 
want to go ahead and, and have to move this heavy and full and all. Uh, but what was very important to me was to have this system remain self-contained. Um, I may want to, if I was going to move it somewhere and it was this full, lower the fluid level a bit. But I want to be able to move it. And, and every option, uh, besides doing something like this, was putting something on the ground and then your, your fluid tank is not movable. And if you use something ideal, I mean, the perfect solution to this is a garbage can. Because even though like this is 227s, call it 50 gallons of capacity, probably holding at full about 40, because you're just not going to fill it to the top. That's a dumb thing. Don't do that. So probably about 40 gallons of reserve. In a 32-gallon trash can, since the trash can's higher, you can be down to like five gallons. You still have plenty of depth for your pump to operate. So you have a lot more drop where this is a pretty shallow container. So once you're down to about here, that pump is starting to suck air and it's not gonna be able to get fluid all the way up there. By spacing it out across two though, you end up in a lot better standpoint. And the other thing was as strong as these racks are, that 40 gallon tank, even though this is holding about the same amount of fluid now, was really bowing it. This is a much better weight distribution model. So this works. And what I'm probably gonna do is I am gonna get like a 32 gallon trash can. And one of the casters that go on the bottom where those things where you can, like it's like a disc and you can set the trash can, they're made for the tough, uh, tough, whatever they're called, garbage cans, Brutuses to go on there. And the reason I'm gonna do that is I can mix a fluent in there and I can throw a pump in there with a switch for my wife because my wife and my grandkids are gonna maintain this system. At least that's the plan. We'll see if they do it. And if I don't have to, we'll see if that really happens. Uh, but what that means is when you need to add fluid, instead of dumping buckets and stuff like that, you just flip the switch and, and, and with a garden hose and boom, fill it up to the level that you want it while it's not cycling so you know what the true top level is. And uh, whenever you need to, to fill up your trash can with a new mix, you can roll it to wherever there's a hose. You know, at least to the, the over there in my garage, to the doorway, there's a hose right there. You can mix up your fluid. You can roll it back over to the machine. And that way I can just keep a stockpile of, of pre-mixed affluent for them where all they got to do is add it. Uh, we do have a, just like I did before, there's an exit pipe there. I'll put a hose bib on that and that way we can run a hose outside and we can dump our excess affluent whenever we have to do a water change into our swales. That's just nutrient for the trees. It's a small amount, it won't matter. And uh, I'm real pleased with it. It's like I said, you can see that is just hauling ass in there. Let me uh, unplug that pump. So. This is how this system works. That pump is gonna be on a timer. It'll run for 15 minutes, and I'm thinking 15 on, two hours off. Um, you don't need to run constantly. Now, here's something that's important. See, that pump's been off for a while, and it's still dumping like crazy. Like I said, your stand-up height of your pipe, that water actually gets higher than that stand-up uh, by, I would say, about a half of an inch, because there's a certain amount of time it takes to overflow and run out, and there's a certain amount of time it takes to go and move through that leak up. So that was about a minute it took for that overflow to cease. So that's all excess fluid. Now, immediately, if you look now, the water levels are about constant. Now we're gonna have a reverse thing happen. This is done overflowing. It's gonna take a while for all that fluid that's up in here to come back down through these pipes. And what happens is they drain almost sequentially because they're kind of flooding each other as they go. So this one drains fast, then this one drains, and it takes a while for this to drain. But you can hear that right now. It's already starting to suck air. So this one's draining. So you saw how much water was in here. See what I'm saying? You only need, look, you have to go almost, to, I'm touching the bottom of the tray right there, and I've got that much fluid. That's perfect. This is gonna be, this is going to work so much better. And what I ended up deciding was if I do any kind of chloroplast cover with cups that you drop in, you got cups, you got another step for them to take care of. Yeah, and what I was going to have them do is put this in cups and then set the cups in. Just another thing to take care of. And then every time there's a cycle, then you have this that needs to be cleaned and washed and whatever. This can just stay in here. They can just stay in there. And that way, let's say we want to do 12 big plants. You just space them out. You want to do a whole bunch of smaller plants. You just, wherever you, just like an outdoor aquaponic system wherever you want, and man, look at this compared to lava rock. If you do that with lava rock right there, you will pull your hands out. They'll look like bloody, bloody mess. Hi, Pooh. Are you gonna grow plants in here? Yeah. Okay, she's gonna grow. Say hello, Tegan. Hi. Hi. 
Tegan and, and grandma are gonna grow plants in here. So there you go, guys. It's been completely revamped. This is like, I wouldn't even call it 2.0. I call it 3.0 at this standpoint. I need to get it in the garage. I need to get it plugged in. I need to get the lights and timers on it. I need to get some fluid mixed and I need to get some starts going up there. As much as I'll be doing starts for down here, I'm gonna be doing a lot of starts for out there as I go into my fall gardening season. So it serves two purposes, making plants for the outdoor terrestrial garden, the other aquaponics and hydroponic systems and doing its own starts. If you're doing starts in six packs, four 10, 20 trays fit in one of those. That's 144 plants per cycle. And a lot of your plants you can get up and running and ready to transplant in one to, to, to one to two weeks, 25 days on the outside. A lot of these plants we can grow to harvest size in 25 days. So this is a really cool, really flexible system. Uh, and oh yeah, one more thing I wanna show you. So these are the overflow guards. These are to make sure that this doesn't block the, the, the stand-up pipes. If you look, this one looks a lot higher than that one. What I did is I just, I made these pipes relatively short so they just were barely high enough, the two inch pipes. And then I just very gently slipped a two inch collar on for a higher level. That way I can get in there with a pair of pliers and pull those stand-ups out and change your height if I ever want to. Um, probably the best thing to do this with would have been three inch pipe. This diameter of the inside of a two inch is about at like a two and a quarter. So a three inch pipe, you know, you'd be like that. You could actually get your hand in there. I used what I had. I also took these, I don't know if you can see down here. You can see, yeah, I drilled some holes in them. How many, what's the spacing? Don't worry about that. I just drilled a bunch of like quarter inch holes in there. Just holes that were big enough to let water through so it flow nice that weren't big enough for these guys to get in. And they're just they're just sitting on there. And the nice thing is if you've ever had a big system, uh, like a big uh, aquaponic system where you've got like a 50 gallon tray or something, if this gets pulled out and all that raw, it's a nightmare. You almost have to take the whole tray out. This stuff's so easy to work with and it's so shallow. You could just push it to the side and you could get it reestablished and put back in where it belongs. And, uh, but adding that additional top, I think is the way to go. But if you have some three inch pipe laying around and you're gonna revamp yours on mine, this is what I would do. Uh, this stuff here, again, it's expensive, but man, it's just beautiful. Here, this one down here, you can see, that's about how much water holds. I think it's still draining a little bit. No, that's about, that's about it. There's your bottom. There's your bottom. But if you look right there, that's how much, again, about right there, that's about how much fluid it's holding. That's perfect. That means we can run long cycles of about two hours interspersed. Plants will never dry out. The rapid orders up there will never dry out. This thing is gonna be a home run now, but it all hedged on that very simple technology. An aquarium siphon. Passive technology, no energy required, no penetrations required. As long as you can have the top open, you're gold. And we can use that in a lot of ways. My big system with three big metal tanks out there, they are bulkheaded together, but as a redundancy, I have one of these going between each tank. So as long as one bulkhead's open for the return, all three will return and all three will equalize. That's how you use simple technology the smart way. Hey, Insidious, what did you come up with? Me and my boy Insidious, we've been going back and forth on ways to solve this problem on the blog. He's probably gonna be like, damn it, why didn't I think of Leica and aquarium siphons? 